Hi and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Shira and I'm a photographer based in Manila, Philippines and I do a lot of thrifting all the time, as often as I can because I use them both for photo shoots, which I tend to style myself, or to wear in real life. In my last video, I showed where I usually ukay, especially when I'm looking for more retro looking outfits and the place is called Sunshine Mall, so if you haven't seen that video, the link is up somewhere here. And today I'm going to show you clothes from one of the ukai ukais I go to most often. I'm sure a couple of you have seen me there, or if you watch my IG stories, you've probably seen me ukai ukai there. I'm there all the time. I really like it because there are so many stores in one area. There's air conditioning, there's parking, it's just really convenient because I'm from the south and it's one of the closest ukai ukais I can go to. And that's Makati Square, Makati Central Square. I think I have more than 10 items to show you and they're not all retro. Some are a little more classic and some are... Who am I kidding? They're all kind of retro. Uh, they're quite 80s, 90s. But don't worry, these are quite easy to wear and I think it will be good inspiration when you go to the ukai ukai next time not to be so scared of prints. I know when I was starting out as a photographer, I used to wear all black outfits, just plain things or neutrals, just very basic things. And slowly as I started to work in the fashion industry, I got exposed to ways people mixed and matched their prints and their inspirations. And that's how I slowly started experimenting more with style and figuring out what I liked and what I didn't. I know it may not be everyone's cup of tea, but I hope you still enjoy looking at the pieces and how I try to put them together. I'm gonna start off with the basics just to ease you into this video a little bit. So this is a cream colored turtleneck and if you watched my last video or any of my videos for that matter, you know that I always love a turtleneck. They're good layering pieces for me. I tend to shoot in studios often and it gets chilly sometimes so I have a good excuse to wear layers and having a turtleneck is one of the best ways I can dress up a lot of my printed tops and just make them look a little more fun. So this is just a basic one, nice and stretchy. Uh, one trouble I have with turtlenecks uh, usually comes from the collar, so I always have a safety pin attached to the tags just so I'm not scrambling around for one when I need to wear a turtleneck. Uh, this tends to come loose around the front, so I always have a safety pin just ready there anytime I want to wear it, and then I just pin it a little at the back and it forms around your neck so much better. I'm also going to be using this turtleneck to style two outfits in this video, so keep your eye out for that. Here's another basic piece, and to be honest, this is the last basic piece you're gonna see. So here we have just black trousers. I have a lot of black trousers, mostly high-waisted trousers, and some are wide-legged, some are flared. I just like having different options. And this one is another high-waisted one. It has a garterized waistband. It's a little more dressed up than some of my other trousers. So I'm just pairing these with a plain cropped white tee that I found in the surplus shop for just 100 pesos. Of course, you could easily pair this with white sneakers, but I had pale pink pink pumps that I wanted to wear. And since we have such a blank canvas with a white top and the black pants, I thought that was a perfect opportunity to wear special shoes. To pull the look together, I pulled out this pale pink trench coat that has a very similar shade to the shoes. And I also have my trusty Esprit crossbody bag that my mom owned back in the 90s. I wear this bag all the time. Next up are these beautiful pants with a nice metallic finish. I love the fabric. It feels really high quality. And I love printed pants because I have a lot of band tees and just loose tees that I love wearing to work with my big clunky Doc Martens boots. And that's the first look I'm gonna give you with these pants. So I just have on this really big sleeveless tee that I got from People Are People I think around four years ago. It was on sale for 200 pesos. And I also have on my vintage white Doc Martens platform boots. And this is a look I would normally wear to a casual photo shoot, most likely with a denim jacket thrown over. These pants are very easy to dress up as well, and I did that with the cream turtleneck I showed you earlier. I threw on this beautiful, beautiful vintage Celine blazer that I found in another thrift shop in Sydney. To make it a little more elegant, I threw on some gold jewelry, so I have this flat gold necklace and gold earrings and then I also have my snakeskin print clutch bag from my last ukai ukai haul 
in Sunshine Mall, this clutch was only 100 pesos. For the footwear, I first went with boots but remembered I hadn't worn high, high heels in quite a while. So I pulled out these nude colored stilettos that have these antiqued details that I think worked really well with the finish of the pants. In my wardrobe essentials video that I posted more than a year ago, I mentioned that a printed long sleeve top is one of the items I really can't be without in my wardrobe because there are so many ways you can play with one. In fact, I also have a video that's called 20 plus ways to style a printed blouse. So in there I show one blouse, one thrifted blouse, worn with sneakers, with sandals, I made it into a formal top, I made it into something business looking. So. That's just one of the many reasons why I love printed tops, aside from the fact that I just love colors and patterns. And let's start with this one. So this has a floral print, and I also love the sheen that goes along the fabric. Because it has this white edging, I first wore it with white shorts. These are my white mom shorts that I found for 50 pesos. And I also have a pink scrunchie that really reminds me so much of my grade school days. I then dressed it up with a pair of light blue trousers because I just didn't want to settle for basic white shorts. I kept the sneakers on but also figured I could play with the colors and found these purple stilettos that I think also look nice with this top. This is another 90s style blouse. It's quite simple, it has this little puff on the sleeves and this tiny little cuff. I really like the buttons, they resemble those cute glitter containers or tumblers that you shake and then the glitters just fall almost like a snow globe, that's what the buttons remind me of. And they're also bordered by gold foil, so I can wear this with a lot of my gold or pearl jewelry. I also like the pattern, it's almost a baroque print, which I don't have many of. And the colors are quite subdued, which is why I went with an earthy cone for the bottoms. So I have on these olive pants that I also got from Akati Square a while back, I'm gonna link the video up here. Since the look was going towards the more corporate direction, I wore less leather loafers, and these you also may have seen since the beginning. I can't remember if they were 100 pesos or 150 pesos, but these are leather loafers for sure. And I also have a structured bag that I think completed the outfit. I'm just pushing it with the 90s theme here with this peachy, creamy blouse. I love the collars. They're very low and they're very wide and it also comes with this detachable bow. I think this was only 25 pesos because I got this from the 4 for 100 rack so I got really lucky. The fabric is a crepe material, it doesn't really say what it is. And then I removed the shoulder pads, they were just a little bit too big for my liking. And then inspired by my mom's office attire back in the 90s, I wore these floral skirts, and I just love that they really cinched the this blouse at the waist because they're so high-waisted and then I wore pale pink pumps just to bring out the light tones in the skirt and I have a crochet bag that I also found in the ukai ukai. I think I'm gonna continue with the 1990s office theme with this blouse. It's this lovely pastel colored blouse with a kind of shawl collar and I tend to take care of vintage blouses especially when it comes to the buttons because I know they can't easily be replaced. You can often tell when a garment is vintage when they have just the most intricate buttons so that's another reason why I love vintage blouses. They're just so different from the things you find in malls. It was really easy for me to decide which pants to wear. As you may know by now I have a little formula when I dress up with prints. I take any color from the print or the pattern and look for pants or any body in that color. I think it's just an interesting way to change it up from your usual jeans. I wore the same pale pink pearly pumps that I wore in the last outfit and then I matched that with this clutch that I found in a thrift store for a hundred pesos quite a while back. I found it in the Bunkal thrift store just hidden among a lot of other clothes and I use it so much especially with these vintage blouses that have pearl buttons. I have one more 1990s looking item and it's this vintage blazer. I love the avocado green. It's just a soft relaxing color. It's so nice to look at. It's very soft on the eyes. It has sort of chiffon sleeves. They're really sheer. It has 
four gold buttons and real pockets and I also like how it's tailored in front it seems like a proper blazer I think you should either go with something sleeveless or something long sleeve because if you wear this with a short sleeve top it's gonna see through and it's gonna be very distracting for the outfit so I opted for this white long sleeve blouse with a ribbon in front and I also wore it at first with white pants in a very similar fabric but I wanted to make the outfit more special and I really waded through my pants rack to find a pair that would bring this blazer to life. So these pants were actually a gift from a friend. I think it made such an awesome pairing with this blazer because the pants themselves have lime green and pink and cream and this dark magenta. So that's what I based the shoes and the bag on. I have bright pink pumps that I wear in a lot of my videos and I have a dark maroon leather bag that I found in a thrift store. It has a tiny gold chain strap that matched perfectly with the buttons and I loved how this outfit turned out. It has the almost corporate office look that still managed to say that I'm fun and I probably like avocados. <laughs> Moving on to something more 1970s is this blouse. It has this pretty soft v-neck with this little bib and really big collars. And I also love the small cuffed sleeve. It's a pumpkin color that's very pleasing to the eye as well. It's a little big on me so I decided to wear it tucked into a rather tighter pair of pants. These pants are a suede-like material, high-waisted. So I picked out these teal Mary Jane pumps with white straps, which I think really complements the blue-green on the blouse. I could, of course, also wear this with my high-waist bell-bottoms and platform sandals. Here's another fun retro top. It's a micro houndstooth print with bright violet and dark violet and it also has subtle gold flecks. I've already worn this top twice. The first time I wore it with red pants but for this video I decided to wear it with my plaid purple pants. In terms of color temperature they didn't exactly match which is why I threw on a white jacket and white boots. I think by adding those two solid blocks of white pulled from the pants just made the look more cohesive and more like you really did it on purpose. You may have to brace your for this next retro print. It's a more 1960s floral print in the form of this really fun blouse. The colors were calling out my name from afar. I could feel it calling me from three stores away. <laughs> I really love these retro flowers obviously. And this one I paired with white pants, high-waisted and wide leg. And I'm just going over the top with these flower earrings. You don't have to do this. I just wore it for the video. I mean, in real life, I'd probably wear it with just these white hoops. Just for fun, I just wore those earrings because they really kind of match the shape of these flowers. I would imagine wearing this outfit to a summer event. It's just really bright and fun and happy. I think all you need is a smiley face and a peace sign. I couldn't possibly go home with just one retro floral print and you are looking at the other one that I brought home with me from Makati Square. This is so nice! I was so excited when I saw it hanging. I can't remember how much it was, but I think it was under 200 pesos. I can't get enough of the print if I could make this into throw pillow covers or maybe a blanket even. That would make me so happy. <laughs> I've already worn this blouse twice. One to a photo shoot with orange corduroy pants and yellow chucks. And I also wore it to the mall with checkered orange pants and white boots. I think I really have to make outfits of the month videos again just to show you how I wear these things in everyday life. But yeah, how happy am I to have this top? Uh, let me get shades just to show you what it looks like with my vintage shades. I found these in the Bunkal thrift shop. So you could just... But I just feel like this blouse is a dose of vitamin C in fabric form. This next top is a zip-up knit with a mossy green and white pattern. I love the collars because they're made from suede. It's also a vintage item, you can tell by the tag. I really picked this out mostly because of the label. It says Jacko, um, and one of my favorite bassists is Jacko Pastorius, so that's why I got this top. I could imagine wearing this with brown corduroy pants and brown boots and maybe a brown sling bag. And of course my white hoop earrings. I think these just go with everything and make everything look extra retro, which is why you probably see these earrings in a lot of my videos. 
This time we have something more 1950s, early 1960s. It's a blazer with a rather Christmassy color with red and green and black and white and just pops of neon orange. When I looked at it up close, I was kind of surprised by the choice of color, but that didn't stop me from making this outfit look classic. So I once again pulled out the cream turtleneck from earlier, and then I wore red pants, pulling from the red of the pattern. And then I have black and white wingtip shoes that really make me look like a character out of a Disneyland parade. Before I move on to the last three pieces, I'm just going to show this bag that I found for 480 pesos. It was on a little bit of a sale. I think it was originally 680. And it's this PVC bag that I think is from the 80s. And I love the geometric pattern that's on it. I also love the slate gray color that's bordering on green. And it has an odor, so I'm going to leave this out in the sun for a little bit. And then I'm going to do my usual cleaning that I do for my vintage bags. I'm going to be wiping it down, and then I'm going to spray it. Um, I really also should do a how I clean my vintage bags video. I have a lot of bags from the Ukai Ukai that I restore and clean and really use, so I think that would be an interesting video to do. You may want to shield your eyes for this. It's a very, very bright dress that I'm going to show. It's almost a highlighter yellow or green color, so don't say I didn't warn you. It's this maxi dress that stood out like a sore thumb from the rack. You could see this from afar. It's so bright. It's loose fitting. It's very breezy. It has this cottony material that you could definitely wear in summer. I really like these knife pleats, or are they called crystal pleats? They're just very fine knife pleats that run along until the waist, and then it has subtle pleating from the waist down. It's so flowy and it's so nice to twirl in. I tried to wear it with a white top underneath so that the collar would peek out, but decided to just make it a summer outfit. And I just wore it plain, but with really, really fun shoes, of course. So these shoes have purple and a bright yellow and black and white. Pulling from the white of the shoes, I brought out this white leather bag that was actually part of a PR package. The company actually sent cotton balls and cotton and pads in this white bag. It really reminds me of the 1960s hat boxes, so I kept it, and it's the first time I actually used it with an outfit. This is the second to the last item. I got this from the store where I get so many of my retro prints from. I also showed that store in one of my videos. I'm going to put the link up here so you can see the picture of the store. It's to the left if you're facing Ida's chicken. And this I could not put down. It's made of velvet and it's also lined inside. It's very long and it has these beautiful big buttons. Of course, this is something you would wear abroad. Um, even though I shoot in studios, I don't think I can wear this inside a studio because it's very long and I could potentially trip on it when I'm shooting as much as I'd love to wear it. Who knows, one day I might. So this one I could actually wear with an all black outfit and maybe brown boots. I can imagine wearing this in Paris. I mean, a girl can dream, right? We have come to the last piece of this haul and I'm just gonna go all the way with my Brady Bunch look with this dress. It's a sundress with a stretchy knit top. It has sort of an empire waist and it has these buttons running down along each side. I love the bright plaid pattern. It has a tomato red, an apple green, and just a really bright yellow. It's so fun and you can surely wear this on its own with maybe espadrilles or just natural fiber sandals. But since I was having so much fun playing with colors anyway, I decided to go for it and put on this bright green turtleneck that kind of matched the green on the skirt. I also went with my white pointy square toe vintage boots just to really amp up the 60s vibe. I think all I need at this point is the Brady Bunch house and I will be one very happy girl. I hope you don't tire of my Uke Uke hauls. I have a number of bags left from previous Uke Uke trips that I haven't shot yet, so those are going to be coming up very soon. It really makes me so happy to see that you guys are enjoying the content and that a lot of you are into Uke uke as well. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate all your comments and I really do try my best all the time to make these videos as informative and interesting as I possibly can. Stay safe everyone and I'll see you next time.